Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Inventor Quick Tips video. In today's videos, I'm going to be covering Philip Wells, but a little bit of the welding menu as well, but I'll cover that, cover more of that in separate Quick Tips videos. Just kind of keep it short and sweet. So the first thing you're going to need if you're going to start working with weldments is an actual part to work with because weldments is naturally an assembly environment. And so, so here, I've just set up a little jig here. It's more just for demoing because it's got gaps and stuff to demonstrate groove and fillet welds. But really, this is just for demo. Obviously, you're going to want your own kind of stuff to weld with. But apart from that, it's pretty simple. And so you basically grab your part, shove it in the assembly, and you go over to environments. Click convert to weldment, and it's then going to ask, once the assembly has been converted to a weldment, it cannot be converted back to an assembly. The bomb structure will be set to inseparable. Edit the bomb if you need a different structure. Continue. Yes, no prompts. We're going to click yes. And then here, convert to a weldment is where really you kind of need to dial in your standards and stuff. So you just click, I, I'm using ISO, just ISO, just pretty much the international standard. But however, it depends where you are locally. And then you've got your bomb structure. Inseparable just means you can't break it down anymore without physically damaging it. Like the like when you weld a part together, it's really now one object. You can't take them apart without physically grinding off the welds, if you think about it like that. So it's best to use a weldment as a sub-assembly rather than your main assembly, just so it means you can actually see everything in bomb structure. And you just click OK. And it's now then given us a new tab called Weld. And so you see here, we've got a part, we've got preparation, welds, and machining. Preparation is where you put all your chamfers and weld prep so you get all your beads properly, so like so any of your kind of surface treatments, that kind of stuff. Welds is where we actually do the welds, so that's where we actually lay down the beads. And machining is all the post-processing, editing to the beads, and kind of final edits that you do. The main reason you do this in well in actually the weldment environment, rather than the actual base part, is more just a history kind of thing. So if you get it from a supplier as one part and then you modify it, you've got a clear, you can clearly say, well, it went from this to this, and the chamfer was added in the welding stage, not the supplier added on the, the chamfer. So let's click on welds, and it now enables a little menu. And we've got fillet, groove, and cosmetic, as well as symbol, end, and bead report. We're going to focus on fillet for this, ep for this little episode, and we're going to click fillet. And it brings up this lovely little menu. And so you see what you've got here is your bead, your contour, your intermittency, and your extents. And obviously you can change your direction. What you need to know about this is that um, these don't actually change. So if you know, like if you're doing an extrude hail, you could just select your profile and it automatically switch. Or if you go do like a revolve, you select your profile and it automatically changes to axis. Doesn't do that. You need to manually swap it over. You see, if I do this and this, it's still tracked on bead one. Let's see if I just reload fill it. Well, you see, if I click, let's say here, and then change the bead, change it over to part surface two. There you can see. And now we can actually start editing it. So here, you can actually edit it based on a length and a height, or you can just do it via the hypotenuse, and you can also select contour, so you can either just go for just a flat, a convex, or a concave, so if we just do a flat, and let's make it a little realistic, I just want this model tiny, and let's just say, none of these measurements are going to make sense in a real world use case, but you see, and there we go, as you see, you can lay the world right there, but what you can also do, it's obviously you can change the contour, but you can also make it intermittent. So that means you can put gaps. So if you don't want to overheat your material too much, you can add a gap. So if you want to like thin or fragile, so length, spacing, and the number. Okay, so let's say let's say we make a length of ten. Or let's say one. And then we've got the spacing. So we can say like ten. And then you got the number. And so we could say like four, or we could say five, or you could say six. And so you see what you've got here is you can say, well, the length of it, you say you can set to four. How many, how long do you, how far do you want between each one? That's the distance between. And the number is just the quantity, so you can say three, two, or whatever. And the start offset just says, how far do you want it? So you can say, just shift it across, or you can set an end offset, so and so forth. So we can click apply. And that's the first one. Pretty simple, pretty nice. But what you can also do is if we now select this little post here, we can select beads, surface, and then we're then just gonna just 
turn off all of it so we get a full full rate full weld around it. We can also create the welding symbol. And it's pretty simple. And you can just select it and then you just grab the current bead. As you see, it just links it all up and you click apply. And what you see there is it's now then grabbed all the data for that world. And then it displays it as a welding symbol and makes life a little bit easier so you know you can identify it all. And that's really it for this episode. That's in the next video. I hope you go on to the Groove World and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.